we went back to XR 1200s. We endurance raced throughout the 2000s. Pretty accomplished record as far as our team, our riders over the years. We found that Motul provides us the best anti-wear additives. Well, we're racing, we're with the 700 series uh, .4 racing brake fluid. Uh, the heats that are, uh, that are generated within this racing, taking a 600 pound bagger motorcycle uh, with top of the line Brembo brakes, we need that consistency within our brake fluid and uh, it has held up amazingly well. Uh, we can outbreak just about anybody out there. VP Racing Fuels, the official fuel of AMA Pro Motocross, Moto America, and American Flat Track. No matter what motorcycle you race or ride, amateur or pro, we have a fuel to make more power. Keep your bike running cool with VP Stay Frosty Coolant, available in two formulas, race ready, designed to be glycol free and track approved, and high performance with freeze protection for street applications. Visit VPRacingFuels.com to learn more. Super Hooligan National Championship coverage is sponsored by Roland Sands Design, built for the ride. Go to RolandSands.com. By Dunlop, the official tire of the Moto America Championship Series. And by GEICO, where 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on your car or motorcycle insurance. As you see the Roland Sand Super Hooligans hitting the track for the first time in race form today. They got to race yesterday. They get to do it again. The final race of the day, one you want, definitely want to stick around for. Welcome everybody to our final race here at Road Atlanta. Robbie Floyd with Roland Sands himself and Roger Hayden. Farthest to my right, let's take a look at the starting grid of the Super Hooligans. Who's going to take it today, Roland? Uh, it, 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 it was so close yesterday, I don't know that you could pick one favorite. It'd be tough to pick a favorite today. I mean, you got to definitely look at uh, at Corey and Andy as guys who are going to take advantage of the day and do what they can. But you know, we got we got two Roland Sands Design Indians. <laughs> they were they were sniffing them from behind yesterday, but both of them started at the back of the grid. Tyler O'Hara you know? and Jeremy McWilliams uh, did start in the back of the grid. What was up with that? We well, didn't ever hear the official word of why they dropped back and had to work their way up. They missed pit out. Uh, they missed, there's a there's a 60 second window to get out. Dude, and Roger they missed it by a couple seconds. Roger, what's going on there? We've seen We've that a few times. A couple this times weekend. this weekend. Yeah, a couple because of because they're strict. They used to give you a little uh, lead way, but not anymore. When that when that board comes out at 60 seconds, that's it. It's tough because it's a long pit road here at Road Atlanta. All right, we're getting ready to go with our first or our final race of the weekend. The Super Hooligans ready to hit the track for the final time. Was that a start or was that the sighting line? Because it looked like whoever was on that near side, I wasn't looking at numbers. It looks like Jeremy McWilliams was having some issues off the start. Yeah, I, I, I wasn't looking at a number. I was just looking at the, the thought process, and it didn't look like he was ready. This is a race, boys. <laughs> hey, let's also talk about it, Roland. Uh, not all the same type of bikes. We got KTMs, Indians, BMWs, Ducatis out there. There's also a race inside the race. Yeah, we got the Mission Air-Cooled American V-Twin Challenging happening, and uh, Randy Skagsberg won that yesterday on our Indian Chief. A um, couple guys out there in Harleys. We've got a couple air cool bikes, American B-Twins out there ripping. Um, yeah, it's a little bit different bike, but as you can see, uh, you know, the grid up in front packed with these water cooled bikes. Andy Debrino leading him on the KTM, and he is getting back to work just as he did yesterday. Andy Debrino uh, won the first race of the season uh, back at, at Daytona, then we followed it up with a Corey West uh, victory. The, both of those guys have been in front. You throw McWilliams in there, Tyler O'Hara, Nate Kern, any one of these guys. We've got to force them up front trying to break away. Yeah, you can see these guys are pulling a nice gap already. You saw the lap times this morning, kind of knew where they were at. But it looks like Tyler O'Hara might have got a little bit of extra steam in the pits today <laughs> from, from yesterday. Um, he blew by those guys. That Indian FTR is doing, it's working well. Jeremy, Jeremy McWilliams, McWilliams oh, moves that, up to second as well. Oh, yeah, on that inside too. That's where we're going to see most of the passes, I think, especially with these guys running three wide. That guy in fourth has a real good shot at it. The two of Tyler O'Hara on that Indian up in front trying to check out. I don't know. We we haven't seen too many checkouts this weekend, but Tyler's trying to be the one. We had to chuck a motor in uh, in Tyler's bike earlier um, yesterday, actually. And as you can see, I think I think maybe the, the motor change might have benefited him quite a bit because 
he's laying waste to these guys right now. He's pulling a, a, a little bit of a gap even on Jeremy. I don't want to jinx anything, and, but you do have a fresh bullet in that in that, uh, in that that bike. But the Roland Sands Designs team has had some hard luck here. He could be up in front, staying up front. It has not always been the story this year. Is today the day you got both your guys up near the front? You haven't won a lot of Super Hooligan races, so to see three Indians up front today, is uh, that, that's a positive thing without a doubt. Um, you know, Corey West knows this place so well. We saw that yesterday. Um, with the way he rides the bike out here, he rode the baggers today as well. I think he got sixth in the bagger race. Um, I, I'm not counting Corey out, but Jeremy and Tyler, they are neck and neck. These guys are trying to rub tires right now. Right this here. is quite a different race than we've seen yesterday. Yesterday, we seen Corey West and Andy DeBrino kind of check away from these two. And now it looks like these two might be the strongest ones today. Yeah, McWilliams definitely the one putting in. Watch McWilliams actually pull out to the left. It'll be the near side of the screen. A guy who's been racing in MotoGP before. Then he comes out here and he's riding a super hooligan. As we look back through the pack uh, behind DeBrino, you have Kern. And then back there's Baird as well as Hastings. We got three Ducatis back there. Shalana Moreta, she's our first girl. Um, and she is on a, is a not a Multistrada, it's a Hyper Motard. Yeah, Hyper Motard. Ducati got Hyper Motard and got a little group of Ducatis back there in the back of the grid. Feel like a pro. She's racing machine out of uh, Petaluma, California. Shalina Moreta, number 93, another one to look for. Yeah, the, the Hyper Motard, Super Motard, either way, it's a more Motard type, uh, style where the Indians, a little different look, a little different feel, a lot of variety in here. Yeah, without a doubt in the KTM back there of ja, is it Joe Shepard? Yeah, Joe Shepard, the 17. Shepherd, yeah, yeah, they're a ways back. And that's a Duke that we've seen before with uh, Chris Fillmore uh, back this year. And up towards the front, four laps to go here. Tyler O'Hara, Jeremy McWilliams, Corey West. Out in front, uh, the differential the last time across the stripe, two tenths of a second, O'Hara over McWilliams. But McWilliams, that last lap, had the fastest lap of 133.77, and the 99 is now out in front, getting by Tyler. And we've seen the aggressiveness out of McWilliams. Roger, you talked about how it never really been to this track before. He was kind of trying to learn things. He already crashed in the baggers. It's hard to pull away. Tyler with that fresh bullet, gonna move to the inside. Especially this long back straightaway here at Road Atlanta. All these guys. Look, there Jeremy you go, McWilliams boys. There you go, the Jeremy. Break. Deep on the brakes. Yeah, the brakes are one thing, but who needs brakes, Roger? <laughs> Just let off of that lever. And wheeling <laughs> down the downhill, too. But uh, brakes are very important. And right here, I wouldn't be surprised if we see him lift up that rear tire, unweighting it. And Corey West is looking awful sneaky back there in third, just kind of watching these two guys go at it. With three laps to go, I don't think he's really wanting to show his cards right now. You know, I think with Jeremy right now, we're seeing the hunger. We're seeing the hunger happen. Jeremy has been a bit behind Tyler all weekend. He finished behind him on baggers. He, he's not going to let this one slide by. I know Jeremy wants to win so bad. He spent so much time on the motorcycle trying to get it dialed this weekend. Um, and these guys have been over in the pits nonstop, tweaking on the suspension, trying to get things working the way they want them to work. And it appears that they're in a better place than they were yesterday, certainly. Andy Debrino back there in Fort Worth, a little bit of a gap between him. I'm kind of surprised, especially watching uh, he as well as Corey West yesterday going back and forth. He's just kind of got a good uh, view of this going down right now. You can see these boys are pushing too. We're seeing quite a bit of tire movement. You look at the back of Jeremy's bike. He's got that thing moving around with it. Yeah, you can tell just by the way they're pushing and you know, they're, they're, the two guys in the front are quite a bit quicker than they went yesterday. So whatever changes y'all made overnight, but they swap every lap on this back straight. They're just gonna be curious to see who puts himself in the right position on the last lap. Having to make that engine change, as Roland had mentioned, it, it, it kind of gives you new life. And there's nothing better than having a new bike or a new motor in there, knowing that you had the uh, freshest ability or the, the freshest bike to give you that ability to take the win. Tyler O'Hara uh, is going to have two laps to go this next time around. He looks over uh, at the pit stand. Are you showing pit boards down the front straight, or does he even have time to look over? I think he's caught a pit board, but you know, you haven't raced this close. You, you know, there ain't no pit board. There's only go forward. You just got to get her done. You sound like Roger. Don't look back. Look <laughs> Don't forward. Don't look back. Look forward. Never look back. O'Hara with the fastest lap of the race at 33-37 that last time around. So if 
anybody's trying to check out is definitely the two of Tyler O'Hare again Roland Sands design machine out of Petaluma California the Indian FTR 1200 Indian trying to win this we've seen uh, in the baggers today earlier uh, a Harley oh, Davidson victory yeah Corey's Corey trying to make a move around the outside of Jeremy McWilliams I thought he was watching, and right now he's tired of watching. He needs to get by Jeremy. If he has a chance, he sees Tyler trying to pull away. Here he goes, the 13, trying to make the move on the inside. West does it. He gets by McWilliams. Now he has one more. O'Hara just in front of him with a lap and a half to go. Jeremy back underneath Corey West. I, Jeremy's hungry today, boys. He's hungry. He wants to get this one done, I'll tell you. What? Also, I think they know there's only a lap and a half left, yeah. so they're trying to put themselves in the right spot where they want to be on the last lap. And that's right. The 13, I think he, if he can get this draft, and set himself up, get underneath McWilliams. He has to make it happen now if he's going to have a shot to get the two of Tyler O'Hara. You don't need to be in front of O'Hara. You just need to get in his draft of that same section and make that left-hand turn the next time around. I think we're going to probably see a personal best from Tyler right now on this lap. He is getting it done. We can see a bit of a gap happening. Uh, you know, these guys yesterday, they were in the 34s. They're going uh, about a second faster than they were yesterday. The retaliation for the 99 and McWilliams, that's what impresses me. He knows he needs to be in second, heading towards that final straightaway, Roger. I think the 99 might have a little something. He's definitely going to want to run it in there on the final well, lap. Well, I think he's got himself positioned where he wants to be on the last lap. You know, to try to Jeremy up the up. inside. That is a tough place to pass somebody. I'll tell you, that is sketchy and beautiful at the same time. But these two going back and forth, though, kind of let Corey and uh, Andy get right up on the back of them. McWilliams dove under before he get to that back straight earlier. Is he trying to do it on O'Hara here? Does he wait for the final straight? Well, just see what he's did the previous couple laps. Looks like he's going to take any opportunity he has. Yeah, so if we look for him to dive underneath before he even makes it out of turn seven. But look at Corey West. He goes underneath. He's going to try and get under McWilliams and oh. sends him up. Now West is the one in second place. This is a great opportunity. One lap rider in between. Watch out for Corey West. Can they draw Jeremy him in the rear back wheel? underneath him? Jeremy is Whoa. not giving an inch, and they had a lapper in the middle of this whole situation. That was five wide. That helped O'Hara, though, didn't it, it Roger? Did. That was everything O'Hara needed. I think they were close enough. They could have made a difference. Now the race is going to be for second. They cannot pull in O'Hara in this amount of time. It is not going to happen. The race is going to be for a second. O'Hara's trying to check out. McWilliams is putting the pressure on again. There's only two turns left. One uphill. Now the downhill, the right-hand turn. Those guys going at it, and the lap rider in between made the big difference. It looks like coming to the stripe. It's going to be the number two taking a look over, seeing nobody. Tyler O'Hara, the Indian, takes the victory. Jeremy McWilliams, Andy Debrino, one, yes. two, three. Roland, why are you cheering? You're supposed yes, to be impartial. Boys. Yeah, I am impartial. Guys, I love you. Thank you so much. I'm going to head down <laughs> oh, to the podium. There is. We'll take this win. Natty lights in your future. I feel it coming. Congratulations, Roland Sands, because <laughs> Tyler O'Hara on the Roland Sands design, Indian. Roger, we can laugh, but he already told us he was going to do it. Oh, yeah. Won. And he talked about how bad he wanted to, to win this race and for him to get his team on those Indians first and second. For all the effort that Roland Sands and all the crew put in, that's got to be a pretty good feeling for them. Not only take the win, he took the top two spots, as you had mentioned. And, uh, a solid run. Corey West, who was literally, it looked like he was just sitting back waiting, and he might have waited a little bit too long. He should have been and, up front trying to hold them off. And Andy Debrino made a pass in turn 12 right. to, to get that last podium spot. And the thing is, don't wait till the end oftentimes. You know, take it where you can get it because lap traffic probably shouldn't have been a, a factor that time, but there was no doubt a factor in determining our winner because it kind of jumbled up those guys in second, third, fourth. Yeah, and, and those guys going back and forth gave Tyler just that little bit of a gap where I think he broke the draft on the last lap. I'm definitely able to do that. Andy Debrino on the KTM. Get another strong finish for him this season after taking a win at the first race, the second. He's going the wrong way, though. He's going from <laughs> first to second to third now. <laughs> oh. What a race. Yeah, hey, uh, that, you said it earlier. I mean, we've had some great racing at Moto America. You cannot complain about the racing we've had. We're going to get to hear from them here in just a bit. Our winner, Tyler O'Hara, Roland Sands Designs, Hooligan winner. Super Hooligan National Championship coverage is sponsored by Roland Sands Design, built for the ride. Go to RolandSands.com. And by Dunlop, the official tire of the Moto America Championship Series.
burn them down. Charlie Brown, that Dunlop is smoking of Tyler O'Hara. Hey, you put a new motor in there, and the guys back there going, don't, don't. <laughs> don't don't kill the valves. Let's, let's not let's not blow her up. We still got more races this year. It was definitely quick. It's worth it. And, and you know, Roland and I said I don't want to jinx it. And I obviously didn't. But he said we've been doing forty of these, and we've only won a handful. Just a couple. We only of those won races. one. What well, was it? It was it only. Well, make that two now. Um, so again, all those races put together, and Tyler O'Hara comes out, uh, out and gives him a victory. Good job for the number two. Championship he had the number one next year, right? That's right. And that's that's the goal. Find your favorite rider in the field. Jeremy McWilliams, the Irishman, taking second ahead of Andy Debrino. Let's take a look at the highlights, Roger. Uh, the final race of the day. And I don't know what Jeremy McWilliams was doing on that near side. That was him, but he didn't look like he was ready to start. But I don't really think it made much difference. He, he worked his way up. No, and Andy Debrino got a great start, and Corey West. And got in at first thought it was going to be a carbon copy of what we seen yesterday with the two rolling stand, sand boys on the Indians. Showed that horsepower on the back straightaway. Yeah, it, it makes a difference when you don't start in the back <laughs> like they did yesterday. O'Hara and McWilliams up near the front. They stayed up there all day. Uh, there's McWilliams. He was very aggressive. Again, coming into that double right-hand turn, went over there in turn six and seven. He, he kept trying to make them pass. Right here, turn six. He's going to dive right back under him in the seven and then the last lap. The last couple laps, these guys are jockeying for position to try to put themselves in that draft where they want to be. Had one rider in between. He was able to make or uh, break that draft. Tyler O'Hara was and coming down. There it is. Here's what happens. Look, it, it looked close. O'Hara was able to get by, but those guys kind of got stood up. They didn't know whether to go inside yeah. or outside. And Jeremy went right back under him, and, uh, you know, Tyler was able to hold him off. And you've seen Andy Debrino back there get that last podium spot. Good job. A little fist bump. Rolling Sands is it's coming in hot. Watch out on the Indians again. Uh, big boy motors from Indians to KTMs, BMWs, and Ducatis. And burn them down. Tyler O'Hara with the victory today in the final race of the day. Let's go down to Jason Wagon. Hey, any class is serious. All racers want to win, but honestly, Tyler O'Hara, it looked like that was actually pretty darn fun, too. There's nothing funner than battling it out and, you know, putting everything into it and putting all the hard work that this whole team has put into it, battling with my teammate, Jeremy McWilliams, to get two Indians up here, one, two, this FTR 1200 is just such an amazing bike. It's the most beautiful naked bike I've ever ridden. <laughs> and uh, you can't thank the whole Rolling Sands crew, Indian Motorcycle, Geico, Dunlop, Motul, STI Insulation, everybody that helps me, 60 Helmets, Alpine Star, CD Boots, all the fans for coming out, we love you. Uh, the good Lord of boy for keeping me safe and hats off to both these guys, that was awesome. It was. Tyler O'Hara taking the win in the Roland Sands Design Super Hooligans class. And same stuff, teammate, oh, almost, almost, did not want to be denied. He ends up the runner-up. Let's hear it for Jeremy McMilliams. Uh, Roland kept saying in the booth, man, you were determined. You wanted it bad. Yeah, um, yesterday really put us in a bit of a dark place. You know, we don't want to be fighting back there 10 seconds or whatever it was, six seconds off the lead. So. It was all in today. We missed. We didn't make, make sure we didn't miss the exit. But yeah, that was a beautiful race. Really enjoyed that with Tyler. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that was probably the most fun I've had all weekend because it's been such a battle. Um, just to come in to second, I would prefer to be standing there. But this was an awesome result for Roland Sands. Uh, so thanks again. You know, the Indian motorcycles, the FTR worked very well. Awesome. We had a good man on our team today, Kyle, for the Roland suspension work. Thank you. Uh, Dunlop and Motul and all of our sponsors, particularly Alpine Stars. I've only got one charge left in this one. I've already set one off today, but it's, it's still as good as new. So thanks again, uh, Image Design Custom for my helmet and uh, Shark for supplying. Thanks again, boys. All right, Jeremy Williams, your runner up. And grinding out a third place finish, spending a lot of the time in fourth, but making moves, taking the podium, Andy Debrino. How would that go? I mean, there was four of you just going at it the whole time, and you're kind of outside looking in a little bit. Man, uh, yeah, I got up to the jump, and we're going down the back straight that first lap, and I just felt 
the wind sucked out of my sails and three Indians blowing by me and it was a it was a little bit defeating you know being back to the whole race those guys were stretching me on the straights and pulling me off the corners you know we were giving everything this state 90 had and I was able to make up some time on the brakes but by the end I my brakes are nearly gone and I just did everything I could to be as close as I could that last lap and I was able to get a good drive get my brake lever adjusted out a little further on the back straight and get that pass last lap on Corey so to me this is a uh, Third place feels like a win today. Um, you know, Corey and I were fighting for that title, and Tyler Harris is going to be right in the thick of it. I think any one of the three of us, we could win at uh, Laguna, and uh, I'm excited. I think that's going to be a good track for me. I'm in a good position, and uh, it's just really cool to share the podium with a couple of legends. I remember uh, maybe back in 08 being at some Stockton Supermoto races and watching Tyler Harris rip it up, so I've always looked up to him. He's a really good guy in Jeremy. I just met him, and super nice friendly competitor those guys rode the wheels off their bikes today and yeah i gave it everything i had i just got to give a big thanks to edr performance eric dorn dan for helping me out ktm usa moto master hjc njk leathers mo tool ever true tattoo cross beam builders my mom my dad um rottweiler performance glc concrete there's so many to thank i um i'm just stoked yeah feels good it certainly does when you win a podium fight like that andy debrino taking third and send it back up to the booth. Thank you, Jason. Great job this weekend. As always, look forward to seeing you at Virginia International Raceway. And speaking of, we check off stop one and two, we'll move on to the third Virginia Inter International Raceway. The next visit for Moto America Live Plus, Road America, the Ridge out on the West Coast in Laguna Seca. You got to find one that's near you. Come join us, whether it be at Brainerd up there in Minnesota or Pit Race, love that one, New Jersey. And finally, we'll cap out our season at Barber Motorsports Park, Roger. Well, it was exciting, Roger. As we close out our day, you couldn't ask for much better as far as the competition. No, you couldn't ask for better racing. Every class besides one went down to the last lap. So uh, that's the way the racing's been all year, and I kind of expect that's the way it's going to be for the rest of the season. Some of the classes, uh, the points jumbled around. We <laughs> see some newcomers having some difficult times in Motor America, but they'll get to refire and get ready for the next stop at Virginia International Raceway. On behalf of Jason Wagan and Roger Hayden, I'm Robbie Floyd. See you then. <laughs>